Hello everyone, Pally Time here. Welcome back to Mother <laughs> Game Time. I couldn't find the button. Today we're taking a look at a game that is very special to me, very near and dear to my heart. It released on Epic Games first, but very recently came to Steam, and there's a new build in the works with a big update rolling out soon. Of course, we are talking about Satisfactory, the game that will consume your entire life if you want it to. I was obsessed with this game when I was playing it. Literally any time I wasn't working, I was thinking about schematics to make my factory better, but I'm not gonna be able to go into all of that in just one video today. It is simply not possible. Our goal today is to show off a little bit of the game and get you started on making your own factories so you too can excel inside of Satisfactory. I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna start a new game. Doesn't matter where you go because all of these are on the same planet. Your objective in Satisfactory is to go down to this planet, take its natural resources, refine them and make better things until you make this full planet completely autonomous with gathering and using your creations. It's actually so cool. We're gonna head to the grass fields for today's video, but feel free to go anywhere else that you would like to go. I'm also not gonna skip the intro. This is a new player guide and showing off the game at the same time. Yeah, this looks cozy. This looks fine. I'm sure this won't be weird at all. Attention Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Fixit. Oh, that's charming. Fixit pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. I could definitely do that. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. <laughs> Expand your factories, outposts, and pipelines through automation and augmentation. Uh, last time I played this video That's wasn't here. This is pretty cute. And be effective. Am I going to be dropped down to the planet now? Imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. All right, hold on tight. Spheric entry in five, four, three, two, one. Planet full procedure initialized. I like that it has the in case of emergency thing over on the left. That makes me feel a lot better about this. Please ensure the integrity of your multi-purpose exploration suit is at 100%. It looks pretty okay. Remember, efficiency first. Godspeed. And with that, we have everything we need to get started. Well, isn't this quite the view? I did not skip the tutorial just in case there was something I forgot. It's been several months since I've played this game. But man, there were some charity events where we knocked out like eight hours of a 24 hour stream in Satisfactory like it was nothing. This game is literally a time machine. Now, I went through the basic tutorial. They told me about my melee weapon that I can use to keep back foes. I can also open up my inventory somehow. Yes, the tab button. And I dismantled the dropship we came in on. I don't know if we're gonna actually need that, but it's really easy to dismantle stuff. You just press F and then look at it. You break down anything that you build at a one-to-one -one ratio. You get back everything that you put into it. It's actually pretty nice like that. First thing they had me do was to use my scanner to find iron nearby. Everything in this world is interactable. This bush right here, I could beat up this bush and take it with me. I think it will respawn eventually, but I can use that bush for biomass to burn stuff and make energy. 
It's not the most efficient way of playing, but it'll get the job done. We found one of the first enemies of the game, and we're going to have to try to dodge around its head charges. When it gets tired or comes in close, I can hit it with my little zapper. But these guys can be deadly if you're not careful. I'm actually surprised he's running as much as he is. Slow down. These big things with the little head. Oh, God, there's two of them. Okay, it's serious all of a sudden. Okay, first one down. We can collect its hide. Yes, that hide, that carapace is indeed used for something in crafting as well. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. There are no rules for where you can and cannot build. So over the course of your time in this game, if you like this field, oh, this is a little friendly minion. If I feed it a certain thing, it can help me find parts for my factory. Kind of like the uh, sea monkeys in <laughs> um, uh, Subnautica. I miss my little sea monkey farm. That was so fun. All right, our first iron ore location. Oh, look at that. It's being protected yet again. We got to take this thing down. <laughs> Luckily, it ran right into the iron ore. That made that really easy. Okay, so if we look at this and press E, we can start to harvest this material. One thing to bring your attention to is that this is a pure vein of iron ore. Objective. Build the hub. Yeah, 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 no. build the hub. To complete this objective, the resource... Oh, crap, get, away. get off of me, get off of me. The fact that is, it is a pure iron ore deposit means we're going to be able to gather more iron out of this than most other nodes in the game. This is a fantastic starting resource. In order to start actually mining this, the first thing we need to do is break off that top piece to make the rest of the area accessible. Now, we do have to build a hub. The game is right. And the reason we build a hub is this becomes our main base for all of our operations. You want to build this in a central location that you have easy access to. In order to build it, all we have to do is press Q. This brings up the build menu, select the hub, and then we can rotate this. How do I ro 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 Oh, it's just a scroll wheel. Rotate this around to go exactly where I want it. We'll go ahead and place ours down right here. Now, it is missing some pieces. Maybe we have to build this out. Now, in order to progress our game, we're gonna have to upgrade a few things on this hub to get it going. And I have a sneaking suspicion. All of what we're gonna need is made from iron. Man, look at that thing flying by. We are not the top of the food chain here, it seems. All right, if we go to the terminal, there are eight different tiers of crafting in this game. We start on tier zero. In order to upgrade, we're going to need 10 iron rods. Okay, great. We'll select this milestone. Perfect. Iron rods are made at the crafting bench right behind us. They take iron ingots, though. We just got a bunch from that area we were at. So I could tell this to just start crafting away at these iron ingots. That should be good enough. We'll turn those into bars. And now we take the bars, put them in here, and then upgrade the hub. And it's just as easy as that. We're gonna see the structure get a little bit more complex now. We also unlock some new Congratulations. buildings. You have unlocked building workshop. Equipment, portable miner, inventory, additional slots, hub feature, personal storage. Thanks. All right, I went ahead and smelted the rest of the raw iron into ingots. We're just gonna go ahead and get the next upgrade. We need 20 of the iron rods and 10 iron plates. All of that comes from iron and all of that is right here. We make two at a time with this, so that is good. And let's make the rest of these. Hey, it's looking even better now. What do we get, voice? Tell me. I know you're going to tell me. Tell me. Congratulations. You have unlocked hub feature, biomass burner, scanner feature, copper, new buildings and recipes, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench, respectively. Thank you. Now, if I wanted to, I could spend the rest of my life walking over to this iron ore deposit, which is now impure what happened, and hitting it with my little pickaxe in order to take the ore out one hit at a time. Or 
we could start to build a factory. And I think that sounds way better personally. Now, with our newest upgrade to the hub, we got a biomass burner as a power source on the back of the station. This is it right here. This won't get us very far, but this will get us started. Eventually, we're literally going to be able to make fuel from natural gases, oil. I think we can have water power. Maybe I'm not right about that. It's been a while since I played. Please forgive me. Don't condemn. However, this is going to take fuel. So all of these leaves that I've been finding while we're walking around, we can throw all of those leaves into the holder for this. But this doesn't have a connection. We need to give this a place to go. Well, let's start constructing our mine. In order to get that going, I think I might actually need to get the next hub upgrade. Maybe I need to make a portable miner. Let me see. First, we're going to need to make an equipment shop. That is six iron plates and four iron bars. That's super easy to put together at the craft station in our base. I'm going to throw this on the front side of our hub. I want to leave the back open for power line management. But as for right now, this can go right here. This is a more specialized crafting area that allows us to make some very important things like the portable miner here, which is going to take two more plates and four more bars. Okay, I'll get those crafted right away. Now, this portable miner is huge this is what the game is actually about you don't want to get your hands dirty in the dirt the whole time yes it's fun every now and then but you want this planet working for you and the portable miners are what allow you to do that now that i have a portable miner placed i believe i put it in my hands and i'm going to Leave that right there. All right, portable miner, do your job. I'm going to need a lot of this stuff. <laughs> That's actually such cool animation. Sweet. Let's make another one. And we'll put this other one right here. All right, let's check on the progress of this first one. How you doing, bud? Perfect. 26 iron ore in our pockets. Didn't even have to hit the ground or anything. That's so perfect. But this is literally so inefficient. We could do so much better than this, bro. You have no idea. Before we get in too deep, though, I'm going to try to find myself a close by copper vein. Uh, 200 meters that way, 300 meters that way. All right, looks like we're going 200 east by southeast. There's also, this stuff is used to make concrete as well right here. Good find. There is an area to the northeast of me. Oh, I guess I said southeast earlier, huh? I guess I was going northeast. There is an area that's covered in poisonous smoke. And that's not going to be a place I can go into right now. But later, with better equipment, we could venture into that no problem. Looks like this is the copper ore that I was after. Oh, and he's after me. Come on, bud. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right, I'm just going to loot this stuff. A little, a little bit of this stuff. We actually don't need that much. And then I'll head back to the base. So, like, a little bit about the world. There are, like, hidden things to find that make you think you're being, like, mind-controlled, almost. Hidden around the map in specific areas. There are snails, like what this glowy thing is on this hill way over there, that you can use to power up your base in specific ways. There are crashed ships that you can learn alternative crafting materials from that are hard to get to and require you to traverse the terrain well. This map is not procedurally generated. All of those locations you can spawn at are the same. Even if you start here, you could run over to another starting location. So learning the map is actually super enjoyable. Hey, <laughs> more free iron. Look at that. Now, sitting here and refining all of this raw material into a better material like the ore into ingots takes time. Putting the ingots and making those into wires 
takes time. No one likes sitting here and looking at this menu and watching your numbers go up as you're crafting. However, this does teach you how to automate a lot of things and make your life better in the process because you don't want to be the guy who's just sitting here holding down space bar waiting for your ingots to get done. You need to make that stuff work for you. Just completed hub upgrade three, unlocked four. We're going to need to get limestone for this and start making some concrete. We passed by some limestone on the way to the copper that we saw earlier. Here it is right here. And we can get started on breaking this down exactly like we did with the other two. Run up to the top, break this thing off, and then slap a remote miner down right on top of that. I'm gonna put a remote miner down on this copper here as well. Let it get to work. Bro, if this game didn't have a day-night cycle, I don't think there would be anything stopping me from just playing it nonstop without noticing that anything had happened at all. Upgrade four, send it. Concrete, power line, except cables, excuse me, not power lines and 75 iron plate all put together for our overlords off planet. Send it! Upgrade number four is on the way! Congratulations, you have unlocked Building Miner Mark 1. Yes! Objective. Complete hub upgrade six. All right, here we go. Now we're getting into the good stuff. With the Miner Mark 1 in our possession, we can start to automate all of these things that have taken so much of my own time. That I think is one thing this game does extremely well. They give you a good understanding of what the process would be like if you had to do it yourself to encourage you to never ever do it ever again. So I'm gonna take everything out of these miners and pick these guys up. I need to make a few plates and then these crafting days are behind me, <laughs> at least for now. All right, if we open up our build menu, we can see that it's gonna take portable miners, steel plates and concrete to make the Miner Mark I. It's called the Mark I because there are better versions of this that we can upgrade later on. But we are sticking those right on top of those iron nodes that we've been gathering up until this point. And now we can start to set up our very basic first factory. Later we'll get splitters so we can like actually take these conveyors and make them go in a bunch of different directions and do different things that we want them to do. But for now, we're gonna keep this very, very straightforward. Bring out our little destroyer and break this down. So from the miner, we're just going to have this go absolutely straight. We can hold control to make sure this stays on a straight line. And we're just going to extend that ramp out a little bit and do the exact same thing over here. Now, right now, the these things are not, I'm out of steel. Woo! All right, with that done, we are going to place smelters in front of each of these miners, holding down control to make sure that they travel in a straight line out and we don't have any weird positioning issues from here. Fantastic. To connect that smelter to the miner, all we do is build a conveyor belt, aligning the two things here. So this, once it's powered, is going to take iron because that's what we built on. It's gonna take iron out of the ground and immediately move it into the smelter. Now we need to tell the smelter what to do. Well, I would like to make iron ingots. We can see that this smelter is capable of mining 30 iron ingots per minute or smelting those that iron raw resource into ingots every minute. Fantastic. We can also walk over to the miner and see that it's going to actually extract 30 ore per minute as well. So we have 30 coming out of the ground and 30 being processed per minute. We will be able to upgrade the miner and you will have to do some extra math later on in the game. But as of right now, this is pretty straightforward. Both of these smelters are going to be making iron bars because that is what's coming out of the ground. Next up, we're going to need to make constructors. Crap. Oh, crap. We need reinforced plate for that. Uh, I gotta make screws now. All right, as we're placing this constructor, the green output 
is where things are going to be coming out of, and the orange is what our input is. So we want the orange facing the smelter right behind it. We're going to hold down control to make sure that's perfectly lined up and then connect this as well with a conveyor belt. And then we're doing the same thing on the other side. Notice that this constructor is on the low ground. That's not a problem at all. The conveyor system is super snappy. Even if it goes through terrain like this, it's still connected just fine. Nothing we have to worry about at all. Ideally, we would get to a point where we can encase all of this in a building, have a nice enclosed system, and you wouldn't see any of this framework at all. But for right now, that's a little limited. This first constructor is going to make iron plates. It can intake 30 iron ingots per minute, and it will make uh, 20 iron plates per minute as a result. For this constructor, we're gonna have it set up to do iron rods instead. Now, notice the difference here. This can intake 15 iron ingots per minute, and it'll spit out 15 iron rods per minute. But the constructor behind it, or the smelter, excuse me, the smelter behind it is actually capable of processing 30 iron per minute. So if you wanted this to be super efficient, you would actually need to put a splitter in here, build another constructor, and have it creating to the same thing. You can do pretty basic math in this game to figure out how it all works. All you have to do is pay attention to the output and input of each device in the chain if you want it to be super optimal. With our Mark 1 upgrades, like right now, it's pretty easy to figure out. It gets a lot more complicated later on. So next, we're going to need to power these devices. I've been roaming around collecting all of the biomass that I can in between these jobs, just grabbing up grass. There's actually chainsaws you can make if you want to make this your full-time job. Go out, cut down trees, and get foliage and wood that way. But I've just been using my hands to pick this stuff up. We got two power generators for free. This will be enough to power what we have over there. That'll be totally fine. But in order to get this going, we need to make a power line. So let's go ahead. We'll make one little tower here. We'll connect both of our biofuel generators to the tower. And then this is kind of our anchor that our entire grid is going to run off, if that makes sense. If we look at this with another power line, we can then create another tower a bit closer to our facility. If it's still blue, that means you still have a line connected, which is excellent. We're going to build one here and then build one on this side as well, because everything we are doing is going to need power. Now we're going to look at the line, connect it to our smelter on this side. Or excuse me, our miner on this side, our smelter on this side, and our constructor on this side. Now all of this is powered and all of this should be working. We'll see iron ore coming straight out of the ground here any moment. There it is. That goes directly into the smelter, which then turns it into iron bars without us having to do anything and then from the smelter into the constructor for the various things that we set it to could do the same thing over here connect this to the power line and get this up and operational except we hit our maximum number of lines here so let's delete this one connect this power grid to this line and then finish Oh, 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 I did this wrong. And then finish off everything. Okay, everything's powered. Everything's powered. We're okay. We ran into one problem and then immediately solved it. We are good to go. The constructors are showing... Mm, this shouldn't be showing yellow. Are you making the right thing? No, it's good. So now that it's making all of this stuff for free, we need a place to store it. And I can't think of any better place than right here behind our base. All we have to do is go to the organization tab and we will see storage containers ready to be built. Remember, the input is on the back, the output is in the front. There's nothing to line these up with, but let's put one uh, here and one here. Oh, I don't have enough materials. So these will be our two containers for what we just built here. And I have full control over where these conveyors go. So let's try to make it somewhat nice, huh? 
We'll have this one curve out a little wide and then combine with its container. And we'll have this one follow a similar path. Now, I will fully admit that this is not the prettiest thing I have ever built, but it will get the job done. Let me tell you, once these are connected, I need two more plates, two more plates. Once these are connected, as long as the game is open, we will be passively collecting these things that we used to have to sit down and actually craft ourselves. And that is the core of this game. Things will get more complicated. Things will get much harder to manage. We're gonna have stuff going all over the place, but at the same time, we're also gonna unlock more vanity stuff where we can make everything look much better. But I mean, I have uh, some concrete I can make over there and some copper I can make on the other side. So hey, we might as well, you know, update this place a little bit while we're here, right? We might as well make it satisfactory. I mean, I've only been recording for an hour. We can go way longer than this. Eventually, we'll be able to make trains that can deliver stuff to places we need it to go to over like a super big area. We can also make cars and a highway system to deliver goods from one area to another. There's also planes that we can make like pilotless drones that can fly resources around. The technology in this game is staggering, but it all starts here. This is the basic fundamentals you need to know to get started. Crap. Power grid shut down. Crap. Uh, okay, we need more fuel. That's that's fine. That's fine. When you're working with biofuel, that thing can eat up so much. I don't know why this is so laggy all of a sudden. Holy crap. That thing can really eat up a ton of your raw resources super fast in, in our multiplayer server. Holly took it upon herself. She was the one going out and getting all of the raw goods that we needed to keep everything running. Uh, I wasn't ready for the power to go out there. Everything is totally not operational at the moment. Uh, are we going to need to jump this? You can get a pretty detailed graph for what your power consumption is like. Come on. Come on. Is that good enough? Yeah, it's just eating through those leaves. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Jeez, that got so laggy. I never really thought about this, but the fact that I'm paying attention to my power like this and actively going out and gathering stuff and prepping it and making sure it's good, all of this will be automated in the future as well. That really is a core component of the game. They teach you a skill that's difficult and then show you how to overcome it with technology <laughs> over and over and over again. Look at this, great example. I took the steel rods or the iron rods and the iron plates that we've been generating and now without even thinking about it, I can make way more storage containers for us to use. Like we just had the resources on hand. We didn't even have to do anything. All right, another new problem. I was getting the copper factory up and running as one does. Just connected it to the power grid, but you know what? The power grid instantly went down, which means we're drawing too much power than the grid can support. For our next package, we're gonna have to send out a hundred iron rods as well as a hundred iron plates, 50 concrete, and then we are gonna need to craft some copper wire. But the beautiful thing is I didn't craft any of that extra stuff that was all just brought to me for free because we spent the time setting up the automation. There we go, beautiful. Congratulations, you have unlocked Building Space Elevator, Woo! Building Biomass Burner, Heart Biomass. Motivational message, congratulations, you succeeded in every <laughs> provided task. On behalf of Fixit Incorporated, I thank you for your current and future service. Nice. Knowledge. The hub note. Okay, I'm going to skip this. What they just sent down is basically a storage container. So for our next upgrades, I believe we are officially in tier one. 
Oh, yeah, this is all the stuff we can get from tier one. One of them is splitters and mergers. Oh, my God, I can already feel my brain wrinkling with everything I want to do. I'm not going to get into that today because literally I will just play this game all night. I'm going to finish what I'm working on, finish what I'm working on. In order to get my current factory operational, I am going to need to build a biomass burner and connect it to the grid to keep this running. That, of course, also means I'm going to need more biomass. We can take the leaves that we are finding and actually turn them into a more efficient fuel so our generators don't eat through this stuff quite as fast as they normally do. I also have some wood I found just from gathering that we're gonna be able to do the exact same thing with. And yes, you can absolutely automate the refining of those biomasses. You still have to go out and get the stuff by yourself, but then you can just put the leaves into a system that spits out the refined biomass fuel. All right, we'll just throw this down right here. Perfect. We could throw some biomass into it, some of the new stuff that we crafted. In fact, we'll take the leaves out of this and throw in some biomass and throw in some biomass to, into this. It looks like we did this at a very good time. All we have to do now is, con you know what? We're gonna build another tower. Connect this line to this line. Collect that tower to this biomass burner. And then turn it all back on. Hey, we're very far above our power needs now. Perfect. Okay, fine. I'll get the splitter, okay? Fine. I'll get You talked me into it, person who's not here. Oh, look at this all coming together. Our plates, our bars, our concrete, and now our copper wire coming down from our other mine. God, that's so satisfying. Oh, that's so satisfactory right there. Uh, how much of this has been made so far? Only 26. Okay, we're chilling. We're kind of waiting for a little bit more to be pumped out. While this is working, I'm just going to build another biomass burner, connect it to the grid, and fill it with biomass because we're making our factory much bigger than it was previously. <laughs> and our power draw is going to go way up. If you have those things burning raw leaves, the maintenance can be a little overwhelming, but once you start upgrading it to actual biomass fuel, it burns much, much, much slower. But because I'm just kind of waiting on my factory to spit out all of those copper wire that I need, which isn't gonna take long at all, it gives me plenty of time to go out, explore, see the sites, collect more fuel for our biomass. What's that? Oh, quartz. Nice, nice, nice. And of course, explore for future projects like this right here. Look at this beauty. Okay, everything should be ready. Logistics can be researched. And now you get to see the best part of the tier upgrades. Now that we're out of tier zero and we're actually shipping stuff off world, as we load this in, we get to press the red button. <laughs> and now we get to watch this fly off into space. Conveyor belts can now merge, split, and lift to increase the complexity and efficiency of your factory. We encourage you to consider more verticality when it comes to factory logistics to streamline short-range transportation. The productivity display will help you measure and improve the productivity of individual buildings to aid with optimization. Yeah, that's great. That's excellent. Oh, I should probably, you know, uh, build the space elevator too. Oh, that's a little too costly for me. But you can see we have all of the materials being passively made for the space elevator. The space elevator allows you to ship up stuff to space way easier and you get different missions for the space elevator than you do for your hub as well. Well, let me show you why you would use a splitter or a merger. And we have a great example of a location right here. Remember earlier, we checked this and this mines 30 ore per minute. This smelts 30 ore per minute, but then the constructor only constructs 15 per minute. 
Actually, more accurately, you could see the intake. It can only intake 15 per minute. I guess the output doesn't really matter for this scenario. So what we want to do is make sure that we are using all of the raw material that we can, because you could see we're kind of getting a backup here. That means we're not operating at optimal efficiency. To do that, we're going to need to build another constructor off to the side of this. Let's get it. Oh, I have to craft more. All right, second constructor made directly next to this one. Perfect. We are going to need to power this thing, so it's probably going to need another power line, but we can just connect that to the one up top. Let's delete the power heading down to the connector we have now. Connect this to the new tower. Logistics can get a little ridiculous in this game, but hey, we, we did everything we could there. We did that right. Now we're going to delete the conveyor belt. Don't worry, we don't actually lose anything there. And we are going to build a splitter right here for the first time. This splitter has an intake just like everything else we've been building. That intake is going to need to be pointed at the smelter behind it. Once again, holding control to make sure everything is in line. Now we connect the splitter to the smelter. And as you can see, just like before, the iron is coming out, but now we can send this in two different directions to two different constructors and have them both making iron rods. Remember 15 per minute, 15 plus 15, 30. That means we're operating at full efficiency, which might as well be like bedroom talk in this game. Exchange concluded. Fix it freighter reentry complete. Oh, our thing's coming back. If you're not operating at full efficiency, why are you even operating? <laughs> is my question. Okay, so we have a couple inputs here as well as an output. We need to pick, uh, point the output towards our former conveyor line. Actually, we can just line it up uh, like this. It's not snapping as well as I would like it to. So we'll just eyeball it. We'll put it right here. Then connect the conveyor belts once again. This time, oh no, that won't do. This time to the merger. So everything that's being built from these two constructors will travel in separate lines, but then converge here in the middle. And then we just connect that back up to our storage container. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, so beautiful. And basically, this is the game. You keep unlocking cool stuff. The cool thing is, honestly, is like as time passes, I would completely deconstruct this and rebuild it. A week from now, this hill would look totally different. And it's so cool to track the progress of not only time on the server, but technology being progressed on the server and efficiency being progressed. Also, uh, the hitbox in this game or the skybox in this game feels limitless. If I wanted to, I could just continue to stack up storage bin after storage bin after storage bin after storage bin. You think I'm kidding. It just keeps going. It's I've literally built like so much that I break my neck looking up at it and it just keeps going. And all of this could be wired as well. So, oh my God, let me do that. Oh yeah, let me do that real fast. So let's say Actually, that conveyor was totally fun. <laughs> Let's say you want to really house a lot of stuff in here. So let's get rid of this connection. Connect this to the very top. That might be a little too steep. Yeah, all the, I, did, I didn't have the right angle for this, but just trust me. You could do some absolutely ridiculous stuff. And the fact that I didn't have the right angle there and I would have to redo this is a perfect example of why your server is going to look totally different over time. This was my go-to relaxation game. I would just open up YouTube videos, chill at the end of the night, maybe watch one of my friends stream over on Twitch, and literally just relax and solve problems in my own factory and progress my technology and get everything perfect. And it was so satisfying. I don't think this video is going to do particularly well on my channel. I've spent the last eight years of my life perfecting my live commentary for action stuff happening all around me. And this game is super duper chill. But if you made it to the end of the video, let me know in the comments what your favorite chill game is. 
What do you look forward to when you don't want to win games, when you're not trying to compete, you're just looking to relax and have a good time on your PC? Let me know down in the comments. This was our first look on YouTube anyway for Satisfactory. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, and if you did make it this far, make sure you hit that thumbs up button on the way out. If this video does incredibly well, we'll make Satisfactory a regular thing around here. I can't think of anything I would like more, honestly. This is like, oh, it's such a good experience. And this is a game I would play with my friends a lot. So uh, if this video does well, maybe I'll boot up the old server and give you a server tour. We were ridiculously well off for ourselves. But the funny thing is like, with all of these tiered upgrades here in the middle, we really weren't that far along. There was still much more to do. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to be excellent to each other. And I will see you again very soon.